Amen. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to continue today of our, in our study of chapter 10. We started in chapter 10 of Daniel last week. Uh, one comment I want to make before we start. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of historical information. There's a lot of stuff that's, that's in this book that, that may sometimes seem tedious to you. For me, I, I so this is I enjoy it, but but it may it may it may seem like that, that there's there's a lot of stuff that uh, for you that we don't need to know or, or a, a lot of uh, information, a lot of tedious stuff. But but the, the thing I think that, that the Book of Daniel shows and our study shows is that the the visions and the dreams that Daniel received uh, were for events to happen. In the future, and what we've been able to, to see so far is that much of what uh, Daniel received has happened. Uh, happened almost exactly like uh, uh, it was given to him uh, as the angels uh, uh, described or provided information to him. And what that shows us, I think, is that is that there's also there are also some prophecies that 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 uh, Daniel received that have not happened yet, but the fact that what that meant that much of what uh, was prophesied has happened gives us confidence in in knowing that confidence in in believing, knowing and believing that what God has said is going to come to pass is going to come to pass. So that gives us confidence of the things that were prophesied in Daniel about the future, the end times, and in Revelations. Uh, revelation the end times are going to happen uh, we've not seen them we may have seen some things happening that are part of the prophecies uh, but they haven't the, the end time has not come obviously yet but we have confidence based on what we've seen in the book of Daniel especially in other books that in fact God if he says he's going to do something and if God says something is going to happen it is going to happen on his at his time and on his time sometimes he gives us uh, specific things to look at we can determine exactly when something is going to happen at other times he does not uh, you know when Jesus the disciples asked him when all the stuff was going to happen that he uh, uh, said would, would be evident of, of the end time he told them that that he, even he did not know uh, but only the father knows but that we should be prepared at all times, like the virgins that went to the, the wedding feast with with oil, with the oil in their lamps, versus the ones who didn't have enough oil and they ran out of fuel, the bridegroom had not come, and then they were out of luck because they had to go get more lamps. And when they came back, they couldn't get in a banquet. I can't remember what book that's in, but that's in one of the New Testament's uh, books, a parable. But the point is, that we we know what God says is going to happen is going to happen. <clears throat> And we should be prepared. And the Bible tells us what to do. God's word tells us what to do in order to prepare. How we should be, how we should live our lives in preparation or preparing for the return of the bridegroom, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, having said that, let's just get back to our study of Daniel. And last week, uh, we started in our study of chapter 10. Uh, which uh, includes the, the, the final vision of Daniel as recorded in the Bible. Um, this vision, if you remember, comes after Daniel had been praying for more than three weeks during the time of the Passover festival in the third year of the reign of, of King Iris. That's the, that's the very beginning of chapter 10. We, we learned that uh, Daniel was, we also learned that the reason Daniel was mourning and not and not and and not rejoicing or celebrating at the time of Passover, which was a normal thing for the Jews, was because things were not going well with the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the temple. And in that vision, we learned that his prayer. Uh, uh, we learned uh, that in the in our chapter, we learned that uh, when when Gabriel came. To, to, to Daniel uh, three weeks in three weeks after he prayed we learned that his prayer was actually heard when he first uttered it but Gabriel uh, was held up 
in coming to him with the answer because he had to deal with the prince of Persia, which we uh, determined was not a man, but a spiritual being, a demonic or evil spiritual being. And then when, when Gabriel finally did reach Daniel, he gave him an understanding of what was in store for his people, the Jews, uh, and and what was going to happen later on at the end of time. So Daniel was given, given information with regard to with regard to what was going to happen to the Jews in particular after they had been uh, returned uh, to Palestine from Babylon and he was given a glimpse of what would happen at the end time when Christ returns. Uh, so if we want, let's, let's go back and we read, I think we read these verses last week, but I can't remember, but we're going to go back and, and, and read... Uh, uh, Daniel, in Daniel 10, verses 15 through 11, 1. So if, uh, if, if Sarah, if you would read that for me, uh, Daniel 15, I'm sorry, 10, beginning of verses 15 and read through chapter 11, verse 1. Um, when he spoke, we, when he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly, one having the likeness of the son of men, the sons of man of men, touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him, "Who stood before me, my Lord? Because of the vision, my sorrows had overwhelmed me, and I have regained, retained no strength. For how can this servant of mine talk?" Lord, servant of my Lord, talk with you, my Lord. As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man, greatly loved, greatly beloved, yes, be, or sorry, yes, sorry, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you, and now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia, and when I have gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. But I tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. Number one, uphold me against thee, except my clear prince. Also in the first year of Darius the Mede, I, even I, stood up to confirm and strengthen him. Okay, all right. So f first of all, I'm going back. First of all, <clears throat> first of all, Daniel, <clears throat> when when Gabriel came, <clears throat> Daniel obviously was 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 afraid to the point that he couldn't even talk. And then uh, then the the, the angel uh, the man touched him, touched his mouth, and he was able to talk. And so he told him, he told the man <clears throat> that he was weak because he thought that he wasn't very important so he was and that's why he was afraid to speak to the guy to the man and the man touched him again then daniel felt stronger and at that point uh the man the angel <clears throat> let's let's call him an angel or gabriel uh felt stronger uh and uh he told daniel again that god loved him very much and then he promised to explain the things that Daniel had seen in his vision. Now, remember the vision we're talking about that he saw was the one uh, in that one in uh, in uh, Daniel chapter eight, uh, uh, and that that was that was the vision he had with the with the uh, uh, the ram uh, and the. Uh, uh, and the goat, remember that? You remember that? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go back and look at it real quick. But but uh, so the man the man touched Daniel again, and, and he told him, and he began to and he began to talk about the fact that he had to go back. Right, that 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 God loved him. He promised to explain uh, the 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 vision to Daniel, and he said he had to go back to fight against the prince of Persia again. And he would defeat him, but but then another 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 one of the devil's servants, the prince of Greece, would come. And we're going to talk about that 
later on. So we know these. Here's what we know from our study of what we've studied so forth. Okay? We know that uh, uh, the prince, princes of Persia and of Greece were demonic spirits that had control over those kingdoms. We know a little bit about the order in which stuff would happen. If you, if you remember, let's review, let's go back to the very first dream that Daniel uh, uh, interpreted was Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Um, uh, Marlene, would you yeah. go? Would you go back to in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter two, and read verses thirty-one through thirty-three? Daniel two. Uh huh. Thirty-one. 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 Thirty-two and thirty-three. Okay. You of kings were watching, and behold, a great image. This great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you and its form was awesome. This image had a fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its party of iron and party of clay. You oh. watched while a stone stood out without hands, which struck the image. Oh. Okay, so stop. Okay, stop. All right. So now remember, going back to that dream, all right, the, the head of the statue, remember, was Babylon, right? Which is where Daniel was, where the, where the uh, Jews had been exiled. The chest and the arms was 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 Medo-Persia, the, the, the strongest of the in, in the in the, in the end being Persia, uh, of, of that alliance being Persia. The belly and the thighs were uh, were Greece, uh, and then the legs uh, and feet were Rome. So, so the, the, this angel is specifically talking about princes of Persia, uh, or Medo Persia, uh, and uh, and Greece, right? Okay. Then in Daniel's first dream. In Daniel's first dream, these these kingdoms were also mentioned again. Um, let's see, Kimberly, would you read in Daniel chapter seven, verses four through six? Yes. The first was like a lion with the wings of an eagle. As I watched, its wings were pulled off. Then it was lifted to an upright position and made to stand on two feet, just like a human, and it was given a human mind. The second beast looked like a bear standing on its hind legs. It held three ribs in its teeth, and it was told, Attack, eat all the flesh you want. The third beast was like a leopard, except that it had four wings and four heads. It was given authority to rule. Okay, all right, okay, so that's Daniel's first vision, right? Okay, now let's go back, let's look at Daniel's second vision. Okay, we, we've identified Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and in the first uh, vision we also identified Rome as the, uh, the, uh, the legs and the feet. So then Daniel's second vision in Daniel chapter 8, verses 3 through 7 Mrs. Miller, are you there? Yes. Okay, would you read Daniel chapter 8, verses 3 through 7? Okay. Then I lifted my eyes and saw, and there standing beside the river was a ram, which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward, so that no animal could withstand him, nor was there any that could deliver from his nail. But he did according to his will, and became great. And five two. And as I was considering, suddenly a male goat came from the west, across the surface of the whole earth, without touching the ground. 
and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Then he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing beside the river, and ran at him with furious power. And I saw him confronting the ram. He was moved with rage against him, attacked the ram, and broke his two horns. There was no power in the ram to withstand him, but he cast him down to the ground and trampled him, and there was no one that could deliver the man from the hand. Okay. From so, his hand. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so again, we, we're looking at now this in this vision, uh, the 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 scriptures that we read, we've only there are only uh, there are only two kingdoms identified: Medo Persia uh, and Greece. The, the the ram with the two horns was Medo Persia. The, the alliance of, of Midian and Persia, and then one one of the horns grew longer than the other. That ends up meaning Persia being the dominant partner in the alliance. Okay, and then the goat uh, that 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 trampled the ram, we determined was uh, Greece, and in particular Alexander the Great. Now. Remember that the angel told Daniel that he had to go back after after giving him that information to deal with the the prince of Persia, and that another angel would help him, and that angel was Michael. Now Michael is significant in this vision because Dan, the Michael, the one that would support Gabriel in the fight against the spirit spirit princes of Persian Greece, is the angel who is the protector of the Jewish nation. How do I know that? How do we know that? If you, if you go to, oh. if we go, if you go to Daniel chapter 12, that's just one verse, so I'll read that. Daniel chapter 12, and the first verse, if you, Daniel chapter 12, the first verse says, at that time, Michael, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, at that time, Michael, the archangel who stands over your nation will arise. So he's talking to Daniel, right? So Daniel's nation is Israel. At that time, Michael, the archangel who stands over your nation will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since the nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. Now, this is a vision of the end time. But the point I want to make here is that, that Daniel, that Michael is the archangel who stands as a protector of of Israel or Daniel's nation. Uh, that there's another there's another reference about Michael too that I want us to look at and it's in Revelation. Jeanette, would you go to Revelation and the chapter twelve verses seven through nine. This kind of demonstrates what the importance of Michael who's an archangel. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. Then war, with both, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great, the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the world astray. He was hurtled into the earth, and his angels with him. Okay. Keep going? Uh, no, no. Okay, the point I just want to make, Michael is a significant archangel who is 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 one that, that, that's in the forefront of the, in the spiritual warfare, spiritual battle, uh, and in particular, Michael is the angel who is the protector of the nation of Israel, or the Jews. So, uh, um, um, remember, okay, rem uh, and so now at this point, Daniel has Daniel has calmed down. He's not afraid anymore. The angel has told him that, that he's precious to God and to be strong. And 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 then Daniel says, you know, felt strong and said, okay, let me know what going on because you've strengthened me so after he calmed down he was able now to understand the explanation that the man was going to give him and he was going to be able to write it down um 
Rebecca, if you have your Bible, can you read for me Daniel chapter 11, verses 1 and 2? Thank you. Drop God. Okay. Okay. Uh, who hasn't read yet? Um, Johnny, I want you to read I'm, more. I'm, I'm sorry? And as for I was just announcing myself. I just got on. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Um, Johnny, would you re re read Daniel uh, 11, 1 and 2, and, and I'm going to have you read more, but right now just read it, Daniel 11, 1 and 2. And as for me, in the first year of Darius the baby, I stood up to affirm and strengthen him. And now I will show you the truth. Behold, three more kings shall arise in Persia, and a fourth shall be far richer than all of them. And when he has become strong enough, his riches, he shall stir up all against the kingdom of Greece. Okay, so now we're beginning to get a picture here now. Uh, uh, Gabriel's going to go back, uh, uh, and but, but he's going to tell Daniel what's going to happen in the future. It's going to bring us to what happens between uh, Persia up until the time the goat destroys the ram. Okay, there's three, there's three, there's, he mentions three, he mentions four kings, right? Uh, yeah. Four Persian kings. Okay, there's, there's, there's three of them appear to have been, be these. Now, these names are not important. It's just what the important part is that they did exist. Okay, that this is what is important now. We need to learn. There's three kings that, 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 that appear to have, that these appear to have been. First was a guy named Cambys, C-A-M-B-Y-S-E-S. -E -S. That's Cyrus's son. Okay, Cyrus was was mentioned earlier in Daniel, right? Matter of fact, Cyrus is the one that issued the decree to go back to Jerusalem. Remember that? No. You guys remember? Okay, remember if if you go back if if you we read it last week. It's in the book of Ezra. Cyrus issued a decree. Uh, to go back, go to, go to Ezra chapter one verse one. Go to Ezra. Okay. Okay. Uh, chapter. You want me to read it? Yes. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord steered up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. Okay, all right, so so that's, so that's Cyrus, right? That's a, and Cyrus was a Persian king. Uh, uh, and so the, the, the first one, uh, and Cyrus by this time had died. So the first king that, 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 that this angel is talking about is his, it appears to be his son, whose name is C-A-M-B-Y-S-E-S. And he, he ascended the throne of Persia in 529 B.C. Okay? The second king, and these people existed, we can put, historically prove them. The second king was a guy whose name I cannot pronounce, but I'll spell it. It's, it's, it's pseudo, P-S-E-U-D-O, hyphen, S M E R D I S. Uh, now he reigned in very briefly in 522 BC. Okay, the third king was Darius the first, who was also Darius the Great. Now we also read a little bit about Darius. Talked a little bit about Darius last week because if you remember, we remember we said we were trying to figure out why Daniel was not celebrating during Passover, and we 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 learned that that it was uh, perhaps because the 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 temple that had started repair on the Cyrus. Remember we just read about Cyrus. He said go back and rebuild a temple, uh, but but that 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 something happened between that time. And Darius, you still have your Bible uh, in Ezra, Johnny? Yes. Okay, go to our Ezra chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. Then the people of the land discouraged the people of Judah, and 
made them afraid to build and bribed counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Okay, all right, so this is Darius. Now, Darius is the one, by the way, and we, we're not going to talk about it today, but Darius is the one, by the way, that allowed them to start rebuilding the temple and the wall in Jerusalem again. All right? Okay, so 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 Darius now is the third king of Persia. The fourth, which he said would be the greater than than all of them, was somebody else that we actually know. It was Xerxes, that's spelled X E R X E S, who was also known as uh, Ahasuerus. A H A S U E R U S. Now he reigned from 486 to 464 BC, but let me tell you, we can find out who he is from Scripture. If you go to the book of, uh, let's see, who has not read? Um, Kara. If you go to the book of Esther. Yes. And uh, okay. Esther chapter 1 and the first two verses. Okay. Let's see. One second. Okay. Take your time. Okay. Uh, Esther 1? Yes, Esther 1, 1 and 2. Okay. Uh, now it came to pass in the days of Esther... Uh, provinces from India to Ethiopia. In those days when King Assyrius sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, Shushan okay. the Citadel. Okay, all right. So, okay, that's the fourth king. So, you know, from the book of Esther, you, we all know what happened in Esther, right? And so we know that that happened, and this is the fourth king that the angel was talking about. Now, the, 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 the historically, uh, students of classic uh, uh, ancient history or ancient history are well aware that there were wars of Darius and, uh, and Xerxes uh, that were uh, wars of, of, of Persia against Greece. So, so we know, in fact, his, his, again, an important part of all of this is that what Daniel saw in the past did happen, which gives us confidence as what he sees for the future is going to happen. All right. So, so now we, we, we've we've gotten there. We've dealt with the four with the four uh, Persian kings. Uh, Marlene, let's go back to Daniel, chapter eleven, and verses three and four. Three and four. Yeah, Daniel 11, okay. chapter, uh, chapter 11, verses 3 and 4. 3 and 4. Yes. Okay. Then a mighty king shall arise, who shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he has arisen, his kingdom shall be broken up and divided toward the four winds of heaven. But not among his posterity, nor according to his dominion with which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be uprooted, even for others like you. Okay, now, so the, okay, you read 4, 3, and 4? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, now, who was this king that's referred to in Daniel 11, 3, and 4? Think about it. Read it right. again. Think about it. Anybody can answer that. Who was the king? Yeah, who was this king that this that that 
that the, the, the angel is talking about in Daniel 11, verses 3 and 4? Darius? No. Okay. All right. It, it was Alexander the Great, because he talks about a kingdom that oh. will be broken apart and divided into four parts. Remember, we've, remember in the other visions, we talk about the, the, the goat and and it's the horns broken off and one one the four horns and one becomes stronger. Uh, the, 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 the goat has the main horn that's broken off. There's four horns and one became so. This is so the so so here the angel is talking about Alexander the Great's kingdom, right? Because he at, who was the goat? Go go back to Jeanette. Go back to Daniel chapter eight. And verse, I want you to read it, verse 5 and verse 8. Daniel 8, verse 5 and verse 8. As I was thinking about this, suddenly a goat with a prominent horn between its eyes came from the west, crossing the whole earth without touching the ground. Then ache was. The goat became very great, but as the height of his power, the large horn was broken off, and in its place, four prominent horns grew up toward the fourth winds of heaven. Okay, go ahead and read verse 9, too. Out, out, of, out of one of them came another horn, which started small, but grew in, into a power to the south and to the east and toward the beautiful land oh, okay all right so now remember okay so 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 now remember remember that and so this is the the, the, the kingdom that, that has been divided into four parts there's the same kingdom we already determined that the goat was Greece right and that the big horn was Alexander the Great we already determined that in the past right in our study Right? Yeah. Remember that? Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Now, here, <clears throat> now I want to talk about some things that that are uh, uh, in verse nine. You read that one of the prominent horns became the, one of the from one of the horns came this this the small horn that grew very great, and he extended toward the south and the east and toward the glorious land, which was Israel, right? Yeah. Follow me? Does that make sense, yeah. guys? We talked about that before. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we also said that that when we studied chapter 8, that most people believe that this small horn was a king by the name of Antiochus IV, and that he reigned from 175 to 164 B.C., and he was also, oh, yeah. he was also called Epiphanes, right? Okay? Okay, so... So let's let's try to talk about that a little bit, and then we're going to get into some detail that that may sound superfluous, uh, but it's important because we want to we want to show that what Daniel what was prophesied to Daniel did happen. Uh, uh, Epiphanes, remember, we talked about him being believed to be the one that ended the sacrifices. In Jerusalem, uh, and he was very, very, uh, uh, very hostile and very dominant, and did a lot of damage to to the Jews uh, and to the city of Jerusalem. Uh, okay, all right. Um, before we get in, we're we going to get to that at some point. Now, remember, remember, the Greek Empire under Alexander the Great was split into four kingdoms, which we talked about. And all of these kings would retain their sovereignty. Uh, and the, the four were, the, the, there was a kingdom in Asia Minor, which is, and the Middle East, uh, which is now uh, Turkey and uh, Iran and Iraq, that area, all right? And that kingdom was, uh, the, 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 the family name of that kingdom was, was uh, the Seleucids, S-E-L-E-U-C-I-D-S. Okay, don't need to remember that. Just that the kingdom existed. There was there was another uh, kingdom that 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 uh, reigned over the part that's 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 uh, uh, mostly Greece, 
and they were the I'll spell it A N T I G O N I D S again. It's not important, but that was the sec second kingdom. The third was uh, a kingdom, another kingdom in Asia Minor, and that uh, the that they was that kingdom is spelled A T T A L I D S again. Don't try to remember the name. This is another. The fourth kingdom were the Ptolemies, and they were in Egypt. P T O L E M I E I E S. Those were the four kingdoms that were were that came about as a result of the break up of the kingdom of the empire of Alexander the Great. Okay, now Johnny, if you would in Daniel chapter eleven, let's go back to eleven. So we're getting back now. We, uh, we we've we've got we, we've talked about we've talked about the the uh, the four the four king the four four uh, Persian kingdoms. All right, and then and now uh, uh, we want to talk about uh, some other kingdoms that were di directly impacted Israel. The important part of this is they directly impacted that part of the world, not Israel necessarily, but that part of the world. So if we start in Daniel chapter 11, verse 5, verses, I want you to read verses 5 through 8. Then the king of the south shall be strong, but one of his princes shall be stronger than he and shall rule, and his authority shall be a great authority. After some years they shall make an alliance. And the daughter of the king of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the strength of her arm, and he and his arm shall not endure. But, he, but she shall be given up, and her attendants, who, he who fathered her, and he who supported her in those times, and from a branch from her roots, and from a branch, from her roots, no one shall arise. One shall arise in his place. He shall come against the army and enter the fortress of the king of the north. And he shall deal with them and shall prevail. He shall also carry off to Egypt their gods with their metal images and their precious vessels of silver and gold. And for some years he shall refrain from attacking the king of the north. Okay, so so this sounds like this is a lot. This north, south, and all this kind of stuff. What does what does that mean? You know, it's 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 doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, well, let's if we look at history, ancient history, we'll we'll see what that is, and again, how it impacts the part of the world where uh, where Palestine was, and the impact that these nations had on Israel. Remember, Israel is God's chosen people. Daniel's a prophet to Israel, so that's important uh, with regard to what happens to Israel, and then in the end, what happens to the church, which is a spiritual Israel. Okay, so let's first of all let's identify who these people were, right? <laughs> okay, if we can, the king of the south, okay, is the king is from Egypt. Okay, he's from the the, 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 the the family, the Egyptian family. The king of the north is the uh, the, the Syrian folk, the S E L U C I D people. Okay, now from 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 the Syrian kingdom, by the way, uh, Epiphanes comes. All right, so the king of the south is the king of Egypt. The king of the north is from Syria, which at that time was, was the area, at that time the, the area of Syria was much larger than it is now. So the prophecy, this is the prophecy, this is a prophecy of Syria and Egypt that were in conflict with one another and with the Jews. Now if you look at history, it's, the, the, it's not a continuous view, that gaps in it, but, but, but that doesn't matter uh, uh, because in prophecy, there are a lot of there are gaps sometimes. It's not a continuous thing. What we wanted what we want to do is to get from the beginning till the end. Uh, biblical prophecy does have gaps in it, okay? But but there's a beginning and there's an end, uh, and 
in 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 the, in the biblical record, but we can fill that in with the historical record. And that's what I want to try to do today. Okay, following me so far. I don't want us to get I don't want to get bogged down in stuff I like and it becomes boring to you. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, um, it says five, five, five and six. It said the king, the king of the south, will increase in power, but one of his own officials will become more powerful than him and rule his kingdom with great strength. Okay, the 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 the, the king of Egypt. Okay. Well, let me put. Let me back up now. Let me back up because I'm getting confused. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're talking about the, the conflict between Egypt and Syria during this time. All right? Okay, there, there, war, there were wars between the kingdom of Egypt and the kingdom of Syria. Um, uh, we talked about the kingdom of Egypt who and, and, an, and an army officer that, well, let's back up. The king of Egypt was a guy by the name of uh, Potlemy, P T O L E M Y, and he was very, very powerful. Okay, and the and that was the king of Egypt. The, the the person who became the king of the north actually was an army officer, uh, and his name was uh, he became the king of Syria. His name was S. E L E U C U S. And he was he was a powerful king. Okay. Uh, we talk about we talk about we we talk about. Uh, okay, following me so far. Yes. Okay. okay. Let's let's go let let's let's go let's let's go back and read. Uh, let's see, Sarah. Let's go back and read again. Daniel eleven, verses five and six. Also, the king of the south shall come, shall become strong as well as one of his princes, and he shall gain power over him and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. And at the end of some years, they shall join forces for the daughter of the king of the south shall go to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the power of her authority, and neither he nor his authority shall stand. But she shall be given up with those who brought her and with him who begot her and with him who strengthened her in those times. Okay, so so here's what happened in in, in, in all of that stuff. Here's what happened. All right, uh, we the, the, we got the two kings, the king of the south and the king of the north, and I described who those those people were. Uh, the 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 king of in in in, in this we talk about we talk we talk about the daughter of the king of you know uh, the alliance. Between the king of the south and the north was was was, was came about because of the marriage of of one of the daughters of a daughter, right? Uh, then in then that's a you hear back you hear feedback. Okay, that's better. The, all right. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, now what what happens is the king of Syria divorces his wife. Okay, and marries a lady by the name of Bernice, who was the daughter of the king of Egypt. Okay, right? But then somebody murdered them. So let's let's now read uh, Kimberly. If you can read verses of Daniel eleven, verses seven through. Twelve. So we call, when we talking about one, we talking about we talked about uh, uh, Bernice, right? So, so uh, yes. Okay. So start reading Daniel chapter eleven, verses seven through twelve. Okay. After this, one of her relatives will become the ruler of the southern kingdom. He will attack the army of the northern kingdom and capture its fortresses. Then he will carry their idols to Egypt together with their precious treasures of silver and gold. But it will be a long time before he attacks the northern kingdom again. Some years later, 
the king of the north will invade the southern kingdom, but he will be forced back to his own country. The sons of the king of the north will gather a huge army that will sweep down like a roaring flood, reaching all the way to the fortress of the southern kingdom. But this will make the king of the south angry, and he will defeat this large army from the north. The king of the south will feel proud because of the art of the many thousands he has killed, but his victory won't last long. Okay, so now let's see. Okay, so we're not talking about Bernice, right? Okay, now a brother of Bernice, we talked about before, became the king of Egypt, king of the south, right? He defeated the king of the north, the Syrian king. Okay, and then there was a period of time when there was no war. We kind of read that, right? Later on, if you remember what Kimberly read, kind of remember, try to remember that. Later on, uh, a, 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 one of the kings of the north attacked the king of Egypt. And I can give you those names if you want to. I can't pronounce them, but they are historic in, in history. The king, the king of Syria, after some years of peace, attacked the king of Egypt. And then he went back to Syria. Then his sons, right? The sons of the king of Syria put together a big, big, big army uh, and attacked Egypt, right? Uh, and uh, 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 in, in that battle, okay, the uh, the uh, the king of Egypt won, which caused him to be very prideful, and and it, and it says he was filled. That's when he, the, the the verse has said the 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 king of the south became filled with pride, uh, and and killed many people. But then he had uh, short lived success. So follow me so far. Hope I'm not real. Confused. Follow me so far, guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now. Uh, Mrs. Miller, if you would read Daniel 11, verses 13 through 17. Uh, for the king of the north will return and muster a multitude greater than the former, and shall certainly come at the end of some years with a great army and much equipment. Now in those times, many shall rise up against the king of the south. Also, violent men of your people shall exalt themselves in fulfillment of the vision, but they shall fall. So the king of the north shall come and build a siege mound, and take a fortified city. And the forces of the south shall not withstand him. Even his choice troops shall have no strength to resist. But he who comes against him shall do according to his own will, and no one shall stand against him. He shall stand in the glorious land with destruction in his power. He shall also set his face to his winter with the strength of his whole kingdom, an upright one with him. Thus shall he do, and he shall give him the daughter of women to destroy it, but she shall not with him or before him. Okay, now in, in, in reading that, you notice there's a reference to the land of Israel, okay? Right? So, because the king of the north was going to actually uh, stop in Israel. And he didn't just stop, he did, he did it stop, it was a destructive stop. So, so a few years passed after the king, after the king of the south Defeated the king of the north. Remember, he was he was proud and successful, but only only a short time. After a few years, then the king of the north, who was Antichrist the third, okay, uh, attacked the king of Egypt, the south. Okay, he was a large army, a large, well-equipped army, and many people as identified. Even some Jewish people helped him to attack Egypt. Remember, we read, we, we kind of read that in his violent men among your own people would join them, right? 
So some, some Jewish people of, of Palestine helped the king of the north in his fight against Egypt. Okay? Uh, uh, and and uh, then the king of the north, okay, tried to defeat, he tried to wipe Egypt out completely with a new plan. He gave his daughter to the Egyptian king to marry. And, and that, but that didn't work out. Now you know who this who this daughter was. Take a wild guess. Remember where we remember where we talking about? We talking about Egypt. We talking about the Middle East, and we talking about that time. Just a wild guess. Who you think the daughter was? You remember the movie? It was a bit huh? Cleopatra. Yes, it Cleopatra. Was like Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Right. That was that was. <laughs> she was Cleopatra. All right. She was Cleopatra. As it turns out, in the fifth, because Cleopatra ended up being more loyal to her husband than to her father. Okay. So she 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 was more loyal to uh, uh, to to her husband than the father. More loyal to to uh, so so the plan his plan. Did not work out. The king of Syria, the king of the north, his plan really did not work out. So Daniel, let's let's go now, Kara, uh, to Daniel eleven, verses eight, okay. eighteen through twenty. Okay. Let's see. Um. After this, he shall turn his face to the coastline and shall take me. But a ruler shall bring the reproach against them to an end. And with the reproach removed, he shall turn back on him. Then he shall turn his face toward the fortress of his own land. But he shall tremble and fall and not be found. There shall arise in his place one who imposes taxes on the glorious kingdom. But within a few days he shall be destroyed, but not in anger or in battle. Okay, so here's kind of what's ha here's what's happening now. Okay, the king of the north, the king of Syria, uh, uh, after after the thing failed with uh, uh, with Cleopatra that plan, the king of the the king of the, the north decided to attack Greece. Okay, he decided to attack Greece, uh, but he was defeated, and he so he went back to Syria. And uh, he, he was succeeded by another king, and this king, this guy, uh, is one that wasn't in power a long time. But he talks about uh, uh, him, him being having a brief reign. He would die not not from anger or in battle uh, because he was assassinated. The next, the king of Syria had uh, was in a great deal of debt that he couldn't pay, and he was assassinated. He didn't rule for a long time. So that's what this is about 18 through 20, okay? Then, um, so let's go back to Johnny. If you would read uh, Daniel 11, verses 21 through 24. In his place shall arise a contemptible person to whom royal majesty has not been given. He shall come in without warning and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Armies shall be utterly swept away before him and broken, even the pains of the covenant. And from the time that an alliance is made with him, he shall act deceitfully, and he shall become strong with the small people. Without warning, he shall come into the richest parts of the province, of the province. And he shall do what neither his fathers nor his father's fathers have done, gathering them among them plunder, spoil, and goods. He shall devise plans against strongholds, but only one at a time, but oh. only for a time. Oh. Okay, okay. Okay, so now, now this person is who is identified as a, as a wicked person is now... Epiphanies. This is who we've kind of talked about in the past as the one who ends up in the end stopping the sacrifices. His reign was from 175 to 163 
B.C. Now his persecution of his his persecution of the Jews and desecration of the temple have been described in history. Uh, uh, in particular, there's a there's 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 a, there's a book in the Apocrypha called uh, First Maccabees. Uh, so it would be an interesting book uh, to to read, especially if you're interested in Daniel, because it talks it talks in a great deal of, of uh, in a great deal of detail about Epiphanes and what he did in the desecration of the temple, uh, his his conquest of Israel, and his his uh, later defeat. Now, th now, uh, this is the same person whose actions were predicted in Daniel chapter eight, verse uh, verse thirteen. If you want, I'll read that. If I go back to that real quick, you don't need to go back there. Daniel eight, you'll remember it. Daniel eight, chapter thirteen. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another one said to the other speaker, "How long will the events of this vision last? The daily sacrifice." The rebellion that makes desolate and the giving over to the sanctuary and to the host be trampled. Uh, so that's that's the one he was asking the question is how long are these actions going to continue? Then we get into the weeks that we talked about the weeks and all this stuff. And we're not going to go into that. But that's what this is referring to. That's what the angel is referring to. That's the person the angel is referring to in uh, when he's talking to Daniel now okay now don't we don't need to go back into all of that but if, if you remember that that's who we're talking about now right okay now uh, we're almost done but i want us i want us to read and then we'll pick back up here next week um uh see who hasn't read her jeanette um daniel chapter 11 verses 25 through 28 Okay, 25. 25, with a large armed army, he will stir up his strength and courage against the king of the south. The king of the south will rage war with a large, very powerful army, but he will not be able to stand because of the plot demise against him. Those who eat from the king's provisions will try to destroy him. His army will be swept away, and many will fall in battle. The two kings, with their hearts bent on evil, will sit at the same table and lie to each other, but no one avail, because, in, because an end will still come at the appointed time. The king of the north will return to his own country with his great wealth, but his heart will be set against the holy covenant. He will take action against it and then return to his own country. Okay, now now we figure find out why Epiphanes was so angry and did what he did to Israel. Uh, he, he, he had a big army and he went to defeat Egypt, okay? But it never happened. Uh, 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 so uh, 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 they they met. They had a battle. They 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 sat down to have a peace conference. And on his way back to Syria, Epiphanes had to go through Palestine, and he hated the Jews and he hated God. And that's why what happened happened in. Uh, uh, in uh, in Israel, him stopping the sacrifices and stopping the religious uh, traditions of the Jews. So we'll pick up next week in Daniel chapter 11, verses 29, and we'll talk about what happened uh, with Epiphanes and how that ended and how how what what his character was. And what he did, it was a precursor of the Antichrist and what the Antichrist actions against the, the body of, of Christ will be and his end. So what we'll see next week is to what he did, the same kind of character, and we'll, we'll, we'll contrast that to, to, to some, some scripture about the Antichrist. We'll see what his character is, 
versus the Antichrist, so we'll see that in Daniel we begin to see kind of what the character of the Antichrist will be. So we'll end there, unless somebody's got some questions or comments.